Hey guys, so I thought I'll upload another video on my YouTube channel. I haven't uploaded any video for for quite a long time. So as you can see, I was working on this uh, indoor scene. I'm still working on it and trying to find out what is the exact temperature of the scene should be. So while working on it, I got a bit bored and so I tried to paint something else to keep my mind off. And so I thought that I'll paint something casual and I chose MS Paint to paint something. I have never tried MS Paint on Windows 10. So I thought I'll just give it a try and then I painted this, um, uh, what should I say, a magical mushroom magical mushrooms, glowing uh, mushroom. So I thought it will be fun to paint this thing on uh, something very basic like MS Paint. And here's the result you can see. Uh, it's, it's my first attempt to create something like that, painting something on MS Paint. Mostly I use Photoshop and other softwares. So this is a very fairly new experience for me. So if you're here to check out for different tools and techniques for a software, this particular tutorial is not for those people because it's more based on basic knowledge of art rather than tools and techniques because MS Paint has very little limited tools to use. So why I chose to use MS Paint is that because of this limitation, you can rely more on, on your basic knowledge or your concept of art to develop or create something beautiful. And you can connect with me through Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus or Instagram. Instagram is very new for me. I just joined Instagram and I've uploaded a few of my works, my paintings over there. Okay, so let's start painting on MS Paint and uh, create something beautiful. All right, so here is the MS Paint interface on Windows 10. Here you can see the brushes panel where uh, you will find all the brushes. There's few shapes there and all the basic tools like pencils, eraser, etc. Uh, size of pencil, colors that you can use for brushes or pencil or, or shapes, etc. Also, there's some um, edit color panel where you can open up this uh, color palette and you can change the color, color tints. You can use different hues over here. Okay, now let's see the brushes panel. There's few brushes and there's paint and other, there are other options, but I'm going to use these two only because they give a good texture. Let's check it out. Let's take very thick one. Okay. See, it has a natural pattern. So I'm going to use this brush. First, I'm just going to fill the background with certain color. Here I'm taking blue since I'm going to paint something uh, in a blue background with a dark background. So fill, the, fill it with blue, then took a darker color and with that flat brush, the one you know, I don't know if there's any names of these brushes. I've never used MS Paint like this before. So I'm just going to brush like a sketch, like uh, very roughly I'm going to brush because I want to give an impression that it's, it's like coming out of the frame. It's like an imagination getting its shape. Just it's very basic and rough. So I'm just going to color it like that. Okay, now that the basic background is done, so I just changed color to orange. Just took orange and uh, reduced the brush size. We have a very limited brush size over here. And then I'm going to paint something curvy to create the top of the mushroom. Thing is, in MS Paint, you really cannot erase something while you are painting like this because if you try to erase some part of the mushroom, you will also erase the back color because there's no layer option like Photoshop, Game for other uh, softwares. You are just painting everything on one layer. So you have to pre-plan what you want to paint, like what color should come after which color. So that's why I'm just trying with very basic painting. When you are going to do a complicated one, you have to pre-plan it very well ahead now that the top hat part is done i'm going to zoom a bit and then uh, try to smooth out the uh, outer outer side so that the curve looks more natural and there's no jaggedy edge or anything and if you have problem or if you have made some error you can just smooth it out or just edit it out with other colors like here i just used the background color to change the shape of the top hat of the mushroom now I'm, I've taken a yellow color, bright yellow, simple palette color one, and just going to smudge it on top of the orange one, just uh, reduce the size. 
Now here another thing while you're coloring on MS Paint you have to be careful about that uh, you cannot blend in uh, MS Paint. So to overcome that problem you have to use different shades of color to create a blending effect. So here I just took the orange color and I'm just using a little lighter orange uh, to give a shade along with yellow because the yellow and orange is giving high contrast. So we have to use different shades between yellow and orange to blend two colors. I'm choosing the yellow color and making a darker yellow and giving it between orange and yellow. Like this you have to start blending the color. Now why I'm giving yellow in the middle because I'm trying to give an impression that the mushroom is glowing from inside. So there's a light effect that coming out out of the orange mushroom. So this yellow in the middle will give that vibe that is glowing at its core and is just making the orange brighter. So again I'm changing the color to a bit more darker. I'm just using my instinct and I'm just trying to eye the color that what color looks better and how it is blending with each other and I'm just choosing that way. See already the colors yellow and orange does not look extremely contrasted with each other because there are different layers of other colors in between. Now I'm going to give a bit darker color on the border side since it is glowing from inside some part of the outside rim is not entirely glowing also it, it will give a very proper border of the mushroom that we can see in contrast of blue we can already see it but uh, it will give a kind of frame it will create a kind of frame on the mushroom so now i'm going to blend this darker orange with the base orange color you can use this color picker tool. It comes really handy when you are blending like this with different color. Maybe you have used some color previously. You need to use it again. Use this tool and you just continue brushing on. Okay, I am just stroking a bit of darker orange uh, well into the lighter part just to give it very different color combination and it will also give a texture to the image like the mushroom has some kind of textury outer skin or something i'm now i'm trying with a darker orange it's just going to give a very good contrast and also it, it, it is creating a definition of the figure of the upper part of the mushroom i don't know what it is called please have patience with me i'm I'm just trying to explain what I'm doing as I'm going and English is not my native language so I just have to think before I say something or I might say something weird. Also I just I just don't like scripting anymore. I never like scripting to be honest because it makes me sound like Terminator, robot and it doesn't feel good when I when I try to instruct using a script. You see that now the color looks much more blended but of course it will not be as blended as you can do it with different brush opacity in Photoshop or any other painting softwares that you use. Because here there's another problem is your brush does not have any opacity. If you find any tactics or technique of MS Paint where you can find how to use brush opacity which I really don't think MS Paint has but still if you find it you can just comment down below and maybe when I paint again I'll just talk about it okay so now I'm going to draw the below part and I'm using a darker yellow because uh, this part will be more lighted I don't know how to say it uh, this part since this is the inner part the light will directly reflect on this part also it, it's supposed to be a bit lighter than the outer part but here the thing is that I'm assuming the light is coming from its stem and it get collected or it become condensed on the top part of the mushroom and then the light reflects inside of it so it's it giving it glow and the light is reflecting also on the below side so the below side which we can see here like it is visible here so the light will affect more on that side because I'm assuming the depth of light and the outer skin of the mushroom is lesser on the below side rather than all around on top. I don't know if that makes sense to you but it's just something I imagined in my head so it's like that. The point is the below side will be much more vibrant and much more brighter than the top side. So here the, I've just almost uh, done the basic coloring using this darker yellow color. Now. Let's see if I can use this brush and 
I'm just taking the orange color just for the shades and the texture that I'm going to create below. The basic texture of a mushroom. Okay, so the basic structure is painted. I've painted the basic structure now just giving light shades of orange so that the texture can be visible because if I give yellow on top of yellow the texture won't be that much vis visible you need to have something different there to give it a uh, depth so I'm just lightly brushing I'm going to give a little bit darker color just to give some shade it will enhance the look as well now I'm going to blend the colors like I was doing earlier uh, with orange I'm just going to I'm blending with a bit of yellow so it, it gives a bit of vibrating uh, look. Now I'm shading it with a lighter color yellow to give the idea that inner wall, the, the lower part of the mushroom is glowing. That's all I can come up with. Yeah, I'm just going to give this color little in the border so that it gives a kind of magical touch. Anyways. Now I'm going to uh, draw the stem of the mushroom, the below part. I really need to know mushroom anatomy. Okay, so I'm going to choose some light version of green first. So first I chose white and then I'm going to use this color palette and choose a very light shade of green. I'm going to zoom out a bit and now I'm going to draw the stem part from here. First, I'll just use that old brush I'm using and just creating the uh, the frame first and just filling up with the bigger brush size. Now, why I'm making it lighter on the top is because the immediate uh, effect of the light will fall on the stem. So the stem will look really brightened. Giving a little darker shade on this uh, uh, kind of leafy part. Uh, I don't know what to call it. So that's that. Now I'm going to take a bit more darker color to paint the bottom of the mushroom, the wide bottom part of the mushroom. I think I'll make it a bit more darker with a hint of a lighter green because the light should not be seen too prominently for two reasons. One is uh, the light from the top is falling right down to the ground but uh, the bottom part is kind of covered with the leafy part. Uh, also because um, it will give a quite contrast in the image. Maybe if the light is coming from the stem up towards the top then it's like the in bottom part the light is quite hidden from the outer sphere of the stem. So the outer sphere is kind of hiding the source of light which is going up and then again falling on top of everything around the mushroom. So I'm giving a little bit of yellow color just to make the light of it but it doesn't look that good. I'm just making it lighter. Mm, still it doesn't give the feel. At this point you have to um, experiment with the color which you will like more here. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm giving a bit of blue on the back side. I really don't know if it will come out well or not because it suddenly doesn't go with the flow. Now it suddenly doesn't give a good feeling. I really don't like it so I'm just going to paint over some basic green, the light green of the stem color. Just I'm just going to paint over lightly over it. Uh, I'm just keeping just a hint of blue there. I'm giving a bit of darker green, darker than the previous one but it is still light green. And I'm just um, with a thinner brush size I'm just uh, stroking up just giving a bit more texture. Now giving a really actually darker and little blackish kind of green. This green I'm giving so that the lighter part, the part that is lightened up looks much brighter in contrast to the darker part. Also it gives a quite good definition of the figure. The lighter part is um, gradually mixing to the darker part of the stem. So I'm going to use the same color on the bottom side. I was already thinking of making it a bit darker than the rest of the part, shaping the uh, leafy area, which also creating a shade on the below part. 
Now here I'm keeping a little bit of lighter green and creating the shades on one side so that it looks like there's a game of light and shade going on at the bottom of the mushroom. It's kind of like the darker moss or other vegetation also covering the bottom part and it's just covering, it's just trying to cover the light source as well. So it's like the light source is just peeking from the darker outer layer. I'm given darker shade, darker than the color before, trying to cover the light source or the light part of the mushroom. It also giving a good dynamic, good contrast between the colors because if the whole stem looks pale green or light green or like extremely bright, it wouldn't look that good. This shade depends on you, but you have to think before you put on a color and um, also try to blend it well while you are putting on color in a situation like this where you cannot blend just try to give different shades of same color so that the blending becomes more natural i'm just experimenting with another color green color to see how it looks um, i'm just covering it a bit on the top side but not entirely because i just want to show the light source as well giving different color shades to blend it with the darker part of the stem Okay, so more or less the stem is done, uh, the entire mushroom looks uh, okay, the basic design is done. I'm just giving a, a few touches over here uh, by zooming out and see uh, how it looks. When you're painting like this, you have to check by zooming in or zooming out how it looks from a distance or from close view, closer view. So I'm giving again a bit of bright yellow with a little bit of intervals in between, just like a little strokes of the color, just to give the idea the original uh, dense color source is in the middle. And then I'm just going to blend it with different shades of yellow like this. Then I'm blending it with the uh, orange part. So I'm just color picking some part of the orange and then just a little bit stroking, giving small strokes over the yellow part so that it gives like a textury shade on top of it now just editing a bit little bit more on the side with color picking and brushing technique okay so the main mushroom is done more or less so i think i'll draw another one because it looks lonely that's all so uh, it's a smaller mushroom so i'm just going to use the similar technique i'm not going to repeat it this one difference in this mushroom the smaller one that is it only shows the top orange part not the below part so it's kind of easier than the previous one and um, it's just make a hat and then color it okay so i'm painting the other mushroom and here the top part is done and i'll do it the same way i've done the previous one so i'm not going to bore you with the same lecture I'm going to skip it through, but here I want to talk about something different uh, from other softwares when we paint in other softwares. You see, when we paint in Photoshop or GIMP or any other advanced software, we can easily create light rays or falling light. Generally, we cannot see light itself, either light source, we can see light source or, or the light that is falling on an object. But in nature, you can see there are light rays and we like to add it is it creates dramatic effect on an environment or uh, or painting. So what happens that light falls on particles in the air and create that light rays that we see. So it's not exactly light itself, but is the atmospheric effect that light creates. But here in MS Paint, you cannot exactly uh, create such kind of light rays because you do not have blur effect or opacity reduction or increasing system over here like in other softwares. It is very common to create these light rays using this effect. But here in MS Paint, colors are solid. You do not have those systems, those methods, blurring effect or um, opacity or any other uh, kind of filter effect to add on to. So in that case, we cannot create the light rays itself, but we, we can give the impression of light and its presence. How? As I said that uh, light falls on object and make it visible to us. So here I'm going to do is that I'll make the light fall on the ground. So we will be able to see which part is brightened up and which part is very much into dark. With that kind of difference of lighting, we can create the impression that the light is falling from the mushroom itself. It's kind of a different way of showing that light is falling. 
if we have painted it in uh, photoshop we had to create this lighting effect as well but there uh, since we could paint the light is it would have been more obvious but here we have to rely solely on the difference of light and shade on the ground so that is a very exciting thing to do we're using our limitation to our advantages so we can have more idea more more practice on lighting or how we can use uh, effect of light on object and environment it, it becomes clearer if we practice like this so that's why i chose ms paint in this case because the limitation of ms paint gives you an opportunity to understand the basic concept of art and how colors and lighting works when you are painting so it's, it's a very interesting concept so let's just try it and see how it comes out now that both of our mushrooms are done, uh, you can see in the smaller mushroom, I also gave a little yellowish effect on the upper side of the stem because I just want to show the light is directly falling on top of the stem. Now I can try on the ground shade. So I'm going to give a light green kind of this kind of color. And just I'm just starting to brush with a thinner brush size. Let's just make it bigger a bit. Okay, so I've started from the bottom part of the um, mushrooms and just going outside. I'm not going to create lots of grass or any complicated vegetation over here. It's just for practice for lighting and um, shadows and coloring, etc. So uh, first, let's just see how it works. So I'm giving a fairly lighter color of green. Now just uh, giving a bit of darker color to create a shade that merges the bottom part of the mushrooms with the ground vegetation. And now I'm taking this darker color with color picker and just going to blend the stems with the ground because otherwise it, it likes it's popping out of lighter green color out of nowhere. It's, it just doesn't match well if I do not blend it. So I'm just trying to blend it with the ground. I'm taking the even darker color. I think it looks okay. It looks quite blended now. Okay, now taking a lighter green. This one is lighter than the base green color. Stroking randomly. A little bit of yellow color. Let's just see how it looks so far. Okay. Yellow color does give the effect that the light is falling, but uh, not too much. Now taking a bit more darker color and just started painting on the sideways. So I'm just keeping the lighter green color just below the mushroom so that it shows that the area, that area is lightened up because of the light falling on it. And the farther the land is, the green, the grass, whatever you call it, further is going away from the mushroom is getting darker. So I'm just creating a land piece which is apparently floating in the space. I don't know. So I'm just uh, creating a bunch of grasses bunch of grasses it's already giving the fact that it already you can already see that uh, the difference of color already giving the impression that that area is somehow brighter and the rest of the area is darker so i'm just enhancing this uh, difference with darker green so that people can be sure that that area is lighter because of the light not because of some decoloration or any other stuff so it's just also the darker part creates a frame frame around the round part it should look like that if you try to spend some more time and make it more perfect it would look even better i'm just going to give some touches over here a little bit touches because you know for an artist you never get satisfied with your with your art that is the problem because every time you look at it you'll find one mistake on another or one thing you want to change uh, is is kind of problem wow I, even without a script i sound like a robot anyways i'll loosen up i suppose Okay, so just add a bit of blue at the background and um, now I'm, I took the first brush, I don't know what it's called, and just uh, adding white dots, which looks like stars. But um, I, I wanted to give a bit more of darker shade, but I just didn't want to mess with it. It's, it looks fine actually without any further shades. 
but um, you can try giving shades but uh, remember whenever you want to color background then do it first before you draw foreground because in ms paint is difficult to go back to your background after you are done with foreground uh, unless you are doing it perfectly along the border of the foreground otherwise i'll suggest that you should first finish your background color your background and then come to foreground uh, except for painting stars because stars won't harm and there's a just dot so it's okay but when you are using a lot of colors then it's better to color background first then foreground so does it look magical i think it looks pretty magical at least to me because i always wanted to paint magical mushroom glowing mushroom it's just fun i just love glowing stuff and mushrooms maybe i don't know so here is the painting. I hope you like it. I hope you like my blabbering and whatnot because most of the time I'm quite, um, I don't know, I don't speak well. That's the problem because as I said, uh, I have to think before I say something. If you like my painting, I'll, I'm going to post more videos like that. Um, I'd like you to subscribe my channel so that you can see more such painting. Here is another version of the painting where I added some glow, little glows. Maybe they are fairies. I don't know. I really didn't think. But up to you what you're going to use. Okay, so take care you all. Subscribe to my channel and keep updated. I'll upload tutorials, proper tutorials based on Photoshop, GIMP and some other softwares. Depends on what software I have. And that's it. Goodbye.